organizing committee, the scientific committee, even in particular for the kind invitation. I'm old enough uh, to say that I was in, I visited Japan on GS, JSPS fellowship uh, time ago, <laughs> some time ago, and I'm very happy to be here to tell you about this. Uh, yes, uh, interplay of topology and physics. It sounds uh, pretty normal nowadays, but uh, when I was young, uh, topology and physics, mm -mm, especially because the, uh, from, the, from the physics, uh, say, uh, point of view, topology was just uh, not so relevant. Even worse, uh, the, was the um, potential theory. Uh, potential theory meant exactly to be just potential and not uh, so useful. And then uh, I remind uh, the young people here of this uh, famous uh, experiment uh, done by the Japanese group uh, Tonomura in the 90s, uh, uh, proving the effectiveness of this uh, so-called Hartnell bomb experiment. So the influence of topology and physics. Interestingly enough, uh, I learned about this from Sergei Novikov, who is a field medalist and a great topologist, who told me more or less uh, 22 years ago, uh, yes, Renzo, absolutely, topology is important for physics. So this is a we go. I'll be very, very simple, and uh, I just need a little bit uh, of tutorial on this uh, part uh, that uh, you probably already um, already saw in the previous presentations, i.e. relationship between knots and surfaces. And uh, um, for me, I will emphasize something even more elementary, the relationship between a curve in space, uh, of course, um, meaning by that uh, some physical filament, uh, and uh, the surface uh, whose boundary is uh, this uh, curve. And uh, then uh, I'll uh, consider three topics uh, that I hope uh, are of interest for you. I've chosen these topics not only because they are fairly recent in my research experience, but also because of the implications I think they might suggest to you. One is about uh, this uh, transition, a topological catastrophe. I use this word. Uh, is an old word in, from the 70s in mathematics. Now it belongs to the singularity theory. But anyway, topological catastrophe of a surface made by a film. The second theme is about the topological cascade of, um, well, we may say vortex defects. There are quantum defects of those Einstein condensates. And the third is, uh, you see, we have a change of topology here, a change of topology here, and a change in the physical system due to the uh, fact that topology is uh, frozen in the system. So there is interplay also in, internally, so to speak, between uh, topology and physical systems. OK, so let me first uh, start with this uh, um, little, uh, just two slides on uh, Seifert. Uh, it was mentioned uh, by Mark uh, Dennis and others that uh, surfaces arise uh, as, uh, as uh, say, um, given a knot. So this is uh, really the original work due to Seifert in 34, where he describes, well, this is the result of his prescription, so to speak. Given a knot K is outer surface sigma for K is an orientable surface so with one boundary component such that the boundary component surface is the knot. And indeed, uh, in order to prove this, he prescribes a technique. And I want to show, especially young people, how to do it. Of course, it's not done by hand anymore, but this is the idea. You get a knot, uh, and then uh, you just uh, smooth out uh, the crossings. And then uh, once you have uh, smoothed out the, top, the crossings, you create these islands according to the level, uh, so to speak, of uh, the floors of these islands. Uh, you give different colors and uh, something like that. And then you connect uh, by twisted uh, bands uh, these islands uh, together back to the uh, ground floor. And you get the surface. The surface uh, that you have is orientable. This property is uh, pretty important for applications. And, uh, and uh, then uh, this surface has the boundary that is the given knot. 
Nowadays, we have softwares uh, to do this, uh, and this is an example. We have a very complicated knot, and we have uh, its zyper surface uh, there, where you see different colors uh, just uh, uh, denote uh, uh, the different phases. But remember, is a, an orientable surface, as you would have if you consider a, cir a circle. A planar circle would be uh, given uh, the surface given by a disk, which is a two-sided surface. Here is another example, and here is another example. The software has been developed by uh, Van Wyck, and uh, of course you may think of a knot that is much simpler. For example, a trifle knot. Problem is that this particular surface is non-orientable, and you can get an orientable surface for the trifle knot um, that uh, satisfies your requirements. Now, how many surfaces uh, uh, every knot has? Uh, well, infinitely many, because uh, you can uh, uh, think of, uh, well, the best idea is uh, probably to think of your, your circular wire and uh, dip it in a soap film and then blow it. And then if you just blow gently this, uh, this disc soap film, you will see that it will increase, as we know, in, in uh, the uh, area. And uh, if you blow it uh, farther, then eventually will uh, detach from the wire to form a bubble, a minimal area surface for that volume. Okay, so this is what I need, uh, nothing else. So um, remember, when you see a knot, you think also of the surface, and maybe there are some interesting properties that relate uh, the surface uh, to the knot. But uh, I want to uh, provide you with a challenge. I, the exercise is uh, to start with the unknot. So there is no topology in uh, your, uh, your curve, in your space curve, which you may think is just uh, the planar disk. Okay, so we go, and uh, this is uh, the idea, and uh, for each topic uh, you will have also reference uh, paper, and this was done uh, in, the, in the time when uh, 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 Ray Goldstein moved to Cambridge, and he's now a um, mathematical, uh, mathematical physics chair, uh, Keith Moffat, one of the collaborators. Um, the, the, the work on soap films as, a, as a, an amazing uh, interest for mathematicians, of course, has to do with calculus of variations, minimal problems. Here we have uh, uh, Courant himself, uh, who uh, was uh, playing with soap films, and as you see here, as a trefoil knotted uh, wire with an assistant. And, uh, an assistant. and uh, of course, the idea that he wrote on a paper for students was what about if we take a, a wire made of a looped uh, filament, so no knots there, just a simple loop uh, filament, uh, and we deform the loop uh, continuously till uh, at a certain point it disappears uh, and it becomes a circle. And uh, this is uh, the paper for students, and then he says uh, a one-sided soap film in the form of a Mobius strip is easily formed, and that it can jump to a two-sided film if the wire boundary is suitably distorted. So this is an interesting problem. He didn't impose the problem and he let it there, but uh, you see, when uh, you deform it, uh, he envisaged that uh, you can go from uh, one-sided uh, surface to a two-sided surface. So there is uh, the change of the problem. The filament is uh, make uh, wire uh, is uh, deformed continuously, no knotting in the wire, but there is a topological catastrophe if uh, you insist to have uh, this uh, uh, transition between a two-sided surface and one-sided surface, or vice versa. So I, I just uh, liked uh, the problem. And uh, uh, I give you just uh, an idea how these uh, topological catastrophes uh, uh, appear, and this is earlier studies from 1740s onwards, and these are just the realization uh, in, uh, in Goldstein lab in Cambridge. So there are just pictures of real soap films uh, transition, and this is the famous uh, plateau problem, if you like. You look for the minimal area. Imagine that these are two wires uh, embedded in a soap film, and then you look at the uh, at this uh, deformation, continuous deformation 
of the surface, and as you um, as you move uh, the wires apart, uh, then evidently uh, this uh, surface uh, breaks up. Okay, so you have, if you like, a topological transition there. Now, I wanted to I wanted to investigate exactly the current uh, problem, and uh, um, I consider the unfolding of a loop in space. You see it here, how it goes, uh, this is just uh, graphics from uh, Mathematica, and uh, you get to the planar circle. So you go from the planar circle back uh, to the folded uh, curve, etc. And uh, these are the equations that I uh, developed and uh, they were then investigated by uh, Francesca Maggioni, who did a PhD with me when I moved to Milan. Um, so the idea is, okay, we have the equations, and the equations are giving you a continuous deformation, just by sines and cosines, of uh, this uh, circle, if you like. And uh, of course there is, uh, you normalize with respect to the total length, uh, t can be time, if you like, it's kinematical time, and then uh, rs is the arc length of this system. Okay, so the idea is, uh, can we uh, work out in mathematics uh, from a space term to get to a surface. Well, you can do that. Uh, the first attempt is to use a ruled surface, and the first attempt is to use uh, just uh, classical mathematics before going to simulations. So you construct your ruled surface uh, like that with this uh, new parameter, and if nu is equal to, to 1, the strip reduces to a circle in the plane. If you think of this uh, uh, curve, then you look for the root surface and you get it. And similarly for all the stages. And uh, when you do this, you see that, uh, remember, it's a ruled uh, surface. So it is rigid uh, to some extent. Uh, it's not the real surface you expect uh, from a soap film, um, but it uh, shows uh, very clearly that there is a problem with root surface if you keep going. Because at a certain point, uh, uh, the hole uh, will disappear, and uh, well, we just uh, uh, estimated the time of uh, uh, these uh, changes, and uh, uh, and then you get uh, to the two-sided uh, surface. Well, uh, I have a little movie. I will show you a few movies uh, uh, on uh, as as we go on. Uh, let me see if I can get to the movie first. Okay, here we have it. And uh, you understand it's very, very difficult to uh, visualize what's going on. So this, uh, uh, the border is just made by wire, and I play it again. And, uh, and uh, as you see, as the hole disappears, it means that the, wires, uh, the wire is moved and the loop is opened up. At a certain point, uh, you will see this uh, strange optical uh, phenomenon, and I will uh, I will simply show it once more, and of course uh, this was of great interest for us. And there you get it. So you have a kind of uh, uh, twisted uh, uh, appearance of a twisted uh, loop uh, that must be made by fluid, remember, it's a fluid uh, surface. Okay, so let me go to the presentation, and uh, I'm here, and so I just remind you that uh, of course we deal with the plateau problem, and uh, this is the governing equation, very simple, P is pressure, and because it is in the air, we have uh, zero pressure, or the jump in pressure is zero, and then we have this H, which uh, is just uh, the, uh, the average of the radii of curvature, or the curvature, the principal curvatures of the surface, and uh, in order to have this equation satisfied, you ask for H equal to zero, and this is just a, basically a geometric constraint. And the, here are the pictures taken the snapshots of the movie that you saw, and uh, I'll be very, very superficial here, but do you notice that uh, pay attention to the border. The border of the soap film against the wire has a name, it's called, it's called the plateau border, and uh, the initial folding of this plateau border, as we go from one side of the nose strip to the two side of the surface, uh, it develops uh, this uh, collapse, uh, this uh, uh, strange feature. We did an uh, analysis on this uh, feature, and uh, I'm going to show you just uh, a 
just a, a, a close-up view of uh, this uh, uh, of this uh, feature. And uh, what we have, uh, we have an initial uh, stage where there is a linking number, Gauss linking number, measuring just the linkage between the wire in black and the green, which is uh, the plateau border, the border of the soap, of the soap film touching the wire. And uh, as we go along with time, uh, we start with a case where the right is uh, nearly one, the twist is nearly one, and we proceed throughout with time, and as it gets uh, close to a uh, flat uh, circle, there is uh, a jump in linking number. Remember, linking number measure of topology, it's a very simple measure of the topology, and the jump is measured by this rearrangement which is, uh, as uh, you saw, very localized and uh, is uh, measured by this change in linking number. So this is a beautiful uh, mechanism. Uh, if you do analysis, you discover that actually you go through an inflection point, curvature is equal to zero at a point, uh, and uh, near the inflection point you do your Taylor expansion. And what you find is remarkable, I'll uh, skip uh, a more detailed slide, but what you have is the first instance uh, with mathematics and physics of uh, one of the uh, original catastrophes uh, uh, that, uh, Zeeman, uh, uh, that Zeeman identified. And uh, it corresponds to a right master type one move. Uh, so this is uh, just a picture where you, you can compare the ruled surface uh, done uh, by Mathematica and uh, a correct uh, uh, analysis made computationally by using the minimal uh, surface algorithm, the surface evolver. And there is a difference uh, between the two curves. Uh, there's, of course, as you expect that, because this is just a rough approximation, and uh, this uh, difference is uh, some kind of energy associated with the area, the correct area should be in the red part of this diagram. Um, well, there is another change of topology well known and already mentioned here, and has to do with the fact that uh, you may deal with filaments uh, like vortex filaments or defects that uh, interact uh, and eventually reconnect. So the question was, uh, is any chance uh, to go from one system like this, a simple loop, to form uh, a link uh, through reconnections? Many of you just uh, uh, envisage this possibility, because of course, if you allow reconnections, you allow change of topology, and this can uh, take place. So my point here is just to move to uh, defects. Uh, very briefly, one slide to tell you, to remind you that uh, will this fifth state of matter has been uh, produced only recently in the lab, of course, was conjectured by Bose and Einstein a long time ago, and uh, a uh, uh, weak, uh, let's say, mean field approximation gives us uh, the so-called gross Pitayevsky equation, it's a non-linear Schrodinger equation uh, given by the uh, evolution of psi, a wave function, a uh, function of uh, uh, the vector position x and time t, and uh, we take, uh, for simplicity, in the numerical simulations that you'll see a uh, psi squared going to 1 as x goes to infinity. So the question is, uh, we are dealing with this governing equation. The good news for people like me who worked uh, for many, many years in, in uh, let's say, vortex dynamics, is that uh, you use this transformation, Madelon transform well-known, uh, where you couple together the density given by just the psi mod squared and the phase uh, theta of the wave function. As a benefit, as a you know, as a as an output, you get uh, a velocity u uh, as graph uh, theta. This velocity, remember, is a velocity of a virtual fluid because we are dealing with a gas of bosons at uh, extremely low temperature. So there is no really a velocity field. But suppose in this uh, context you take uh, this uh, approach that is a continuum approach, and uh, through Madelung is uh, 50 years. We know this. 
uh, you get uh, to the these couple of equations. Uh, you have uh, a, the first equation is just a continuity equation, well known to everybody. The second equation resembles closely uh, the Navier-Stokes equation. Of course, the key difference is that the gradient here are the gradients of uh, density. There is no velocity, and the pressure is represented by this uh, rho squared of the fall. Okay. So this is almost uh, uh, as hydrodynamics as we can go. And uh, with this uh, uh, setting and uh, using uh, gross pit ASP, we can do simulations of the evolution of uh, vortex uh, defects. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, one picture. And uh, you have uh, a defect in the form of a, of a Hopf uh, link. And as time passes, there are reconnections and uh, farther reconnections. So I want to show you just quickly how it gets to the movie. And here, here we have. Uh, the movie goes uh, very slowly. So let me just uh, move faster. And uh, as you see, sorry. As you see at the certain point, the two rings uh, reconnect here, you see. They reconnect, change the color. You go from a link to a non-folded uh, loop one single structure, and then you have a secondary reconnection to form another loop, and uh, probably a third one to form uh, a third loop. Now, this uh, situation is uh, actually typical of uh, systems that we know very well, classical fluid mechanics, where you start with uh, uh, maybe many vortices interacting, and the end result is uh, a number of uh, small size uh, loops uh, that uh, are getting towards uh, turbulence. So the idea is uh, the following. We have, uh, um, topologically at least, uh, we have uh, maybe a filament, a vortex filament, that is uh, forming a complex knot. Uh, this is, of course, uh, just a schematic view of something that is complex, say the 2 5 knot, and then you let it evolve. Now, the probability that evolves towards uh, uh, small loops uh, is very high. Okay? I'm not saying that it goes dark into small loops. It may uh, instantaneously go and transitionally to more complex system, but then eventually goes down to complex system, to simpler systems. And you see here what I have uh, in mind to tell you. Uh, you start with, with a complex topology, and then you go down towards the uh, formation of, uh, of uh, unknotted, unlinked uh, loops. Now, this uh, pattern has been observed in a laboratory, including the experiment by William Irvine that Mark Dennis mentioned uh, this morning, but also in DNA uh, by the action of enzymes. Topoisomerases uh, on uh, on uh, DNAs provoke this uh, this cascade. This cascade is pretty generic, but what I want to say is that uh, it's not the only possibility you have in nature. Of course, you have uh, other chances. For example, if you assume uh, sorry here I didn't say, but this uh, dashed region uh, identifies a region where we have reconnection. And we take one single reconnection at a time, so we go from a knot to a link to a knot to a link, etc. But of course, uh, in nature, nature does what it wants. So in, you, you may have a number of reconnections occurring simultaneously. If uh, that happens, of course, you go from a complex system to something you, do, you just do a, a, a immediate cascade in topology, and then further down to form uh, small loops. Let me show you uh, the movie about that. These are, are all simulations of, uh, of, um, of gross Pitagaski equation. Um, and uh, you have uh, some rotation here. By the way, uh, these are done with uh, Simone Zucker. And uh, Simone Zucker provided also this, uh, uh, this uh, projection of, uh, of this uh, filament that is evolving in space. At a certain point, you can see an instantaneous reconnection occurring to uh, form a smaller structure. And then the highly bent region also reconnect and instantaneously reconnect to form uh, a nublocked cascade towards a, a smaller structure. You see here the small loops uh, form. 
Okay, so here we are, and uh, let me go back uh, to where I was, and uh, that is uh, the result. Then Mark Dennis uh, mentioned the work of uh, William Irvine to simulate, to produce uh, uh, one of Lord Kelvin's uh, dreams, uh, in other words, the production of a knotted uh, structure. And uh, William Irvine and his group, they made uh, a trefoil knot, as you saw this morning, but the problem is that uh, they started with a trifoil knotted airfoil. In other words, uh, the trifoil knot produced uh, in the lab inherited the topology of the airfoil. So my question was exactly what Lord Kelvin wanted. How to make uh, two unknotted, uh, unlinked loops uh, to reconnect uh, and to go backwards in that scenario uh, to produce uh, a knotted structure. And uh, I show you the movie, and here is uh, you have uh, two different colors uh, in the film, uh, pro in the little movie, it's probably more visible, but one is light blue, the other is dark blue, and they are, you can see the projection here, and they are unlinked and unknotted. And uh, as you go through uh, time, you go through the inverse topological cascade to form one single loop from two unlinked and knotted loops, and then a hot link, and then a trapoid knot. I'll, uh, I'll show you uh, the movie. Um, yes, must be this one. Okay, and uh, as you see, uh, the interesting feature is that uh, you have to break symmetry, first of all. And so if you break symmetry in the initial condition, then you, your system evolves it so to have reconnections not at the same time. That's the point. Okay, so you have a formation of a single loop that is quite convoluted, and then it reconnects again here, probably, and you get the formation of a hot link and then uh, it reconnects somewhere else to produce uh, uh, your trapoil. Okay, and there you have it. So what we learn from here is one thing, is that of course we can go backward in this typical cascade of increasing topology, but uh, you need to have a very precise initial condition. And we can say something that uh, I'm not going to show you, so please trust me on this. We have to compute somehow probabilities of occurring of this phenomena, and we can show that the probability to produce a complex knot starting from something simple is very low. That's why it's so hard to realize uh, that type of uh, evolution. Okay, now, um, I want to uh, tell you something because I talked about knots, I talked about uh, surfaces, I want to relate the two as of for the soap film. And if you look at the total energy for the gross pitayevsky equation, we start uh, from uh, the typical wave function and then we, uh, use an Allen transform and so we can read out uh, these contributions, kinetic energy, quantum energy, potential energy and interaction or internal energy. Um, now, we look for minimal area also in this case, and we wonder if there is any meaning in terms of energy for these areas. So the question is, uh, what is uh, the minimal area? The least uh, area of uh, bounded by a given uh, knot type, in this case, uh, the hot link. Well, it's uh, pretty hard in this uh, case, but if you, if you consider that uh, density is uh, basically constant far away, and uh, the region in which the gradient of densities matter are very, very localized on the nodal line, uh, we're talking healing length, uh, we're talking Armstrongs uh, of, uh, of thickness, so to speak, uh, then uh, 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 basically you can approximate uh, this uh, search for the minimal area as uh, your search for a minimal area with rho constant, density constant. The two areas, the two surfaces, are almost identical in areas. We compute numbers and we can prove that too. But here, if we do this assumption, evidently you get a divergence of u because rho is constant equal to zero. And because u is grad of uh, theta, you reduce the problem to the Laplace problem. 
In the case of the Laplace problem, you can talk about this Dirichlet energy, and the Dirichlet energy is computed in terms of grand psi. If you substitute uh, uh, psi with the uh, uh, Maglum transform, you see that uh, basically the Dirichlet energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the quantum energy. You do your computation and you see, for example, in this case, is the most complicated knot we checked, but it's true for all other knots. This result is that the area basically diminishes all the times. And this is uh, an evidence uh, provided by the fact that we computed the maximum of the of, uh, Dirichlet energy and the Dirichlet energy on the minimal surface, just to double check. That is a continuous decrease of energy. Of course, there are bumps uh, here and there, and this is uh, due, uh, at least is what we believe, to the numerical uh, limitation of uh, the grid. But we can also use uh, topology and physics uh, to have uh, some new phenomena. Suppose that topology is fixed, and in this case, it's a good case because it resembles and there are connections with the talk of, uh, of uh, Paul Sutcliffe, uh, because uh, defects uh, are not aligned uh, of the phase, and uh, it means that you have your space foliated by the isophase surfaces. So if you think of a straight line, uh, the phase would be foliated as a book decomposition, so to speak. So what about uh, something like this? OK, and uh, this is uh, your paper. If you're interested to check uh, what uh, I'm going to tell you. The idea is uh, to create uh, something new out of uh, something simple uh, without redirections. Now, this is uh, just a, a graphical picture of the phase for a vortex ring, a ring defect. And you say, OK, I take uh, my phase that goes all around the ring, and there is no twist here. And then uh, if there is no rotation of the phase around that, uh, you have a hydrodynamic version of this uh, defect uh, ring, which is the classical vortex ring. You have uh, the uh, theta, the u theta, the azimuth of uh, around this uh, uh, center line, and the ring uh, goes up. But what about if uh, we have a uniform rotation? As we go around here, we have a phase that uh, rotates around the, the defect. This is reminiscent of what. Uh, Bob Dennis showed uh, in the earlier work with uh, Michael Berry. Um, what happens if we, in Inject a twist just on the defect. Uh, and if we do this, there is an immediate formation of a defect at the central axis. And the reason for this is quite simple. Well, you have an hydrodynamic interpretation of this. Of course, you add an axial flow here. Yeah? And if you add an axial flow, evidently, you must uh, compensate that uh, with a central uh, vortex, uh, straight uh, vortex uh, forming there. Well, uh, the reason is that uh, both systems, the belarusian zabotinsky system of uh, Paul Sutcliffe and uh, Gross-Pitayevsky and other systems, uh, because uh, these systems are uh, foliated, so to speak, uh, are foliating the entire space, uh, it means uh, that uh, they always uh, allow a ziphered uh, foliation. You can always find a surface uh, infinitely many who, uh, that are bounded by the defect on which you can construct uh, your, uh, your ribbon, your mathematical ribbon to measure linkage. And the, the final, uh, you know, the, the end line of this is that you can prove that for these systems, uh, total, the sum of all linking numbers, li uh, Gauss linking number and the set linking number, so to speak, uh, they uh, are equal to zero. And because of this con constraint, sum of total linkage, linkage equal to zero, you insert some twist, and then uh, the system must react in order to obey this constraint. So here we are. Uh, the idea is, OK, we take uh, our background uh, uh, wave function, we superimpose a twist. And this is just mathematics, so it has to be realized somewhere in the lab. And uh, here is the idea. So you take uh, your phase and you twist it up. 
uh, you, of course, get uh, to a uh, modified version of the initial gross beta gsp equation. This equation is still non-linear uh, non Schrodinger type. And then you can prove that the Hamiltonian associated with this equation is non-emission. And uh, there are physicists here, so they know the importance of discovering non-emissionity uh, in systems. And uh, we can provide an instability criterion, where in one case we have no twist diffusion, in the other we have a twist diffusion. So if we have a twist diffusion, it means that the twist propagates along the field. And now we face uh, an interesting problem uh, because, uh, okay, you can say in some way uh, in the lab uh, one day somebody will be able to produce uh, a rotation of the phase uh, centered on the, on the defect. And indeed, uh, uh, if we do this, phase width is set to be uniform in space if it is transported highly on each uh, isophase surface. And so you expect that because of this condition and because of the fact that total linkage is uh, zero, uh, you may think of uh, some, uh, some kind of rotation of the, of the, of the phase as a, as a spiral going everywhere. And as a result, you produce new defects. So let me show you. It's really instantaneous. Uh, so there is not much to see except uh, that uh, I give you here Instead of uh, one ring, uh, as uh, was done before, you have two rings, and uh, they evolve, so they will eventually reconnect, uh, and uh, this is what happens. As you insert twist, you see there is an immediate, an immediate uh, uh, formation of this uh, central uh, defect, uh, as was shown also by, by Paul, Paul Sutton. And there is a reconnection eventually going on. And remember that there is a balance between the, the twist on the field line of the, the first ring and the, and the twist of the other line, which means a linkage between the two systems. I think I have also this other case where we explore many cases just to show you that uh, we may have more complex uh, system because if we superimpose a twist on the second ring, we are also we have also the formation of new defects on, uh, on uh, a secondary defect also on the secondary. Okay, then of course they get uh, distorted, etc., etc. Now, um, the idea that uh, I want to leave you with is uh, that at a certain point I thought, okay, it might, be, it might be wrong, I don't know, but what about if we can constrain the twist uh, on the tubular uh, region of the on the healing region, so very very closed on the on the on the on the defect, and imagine that it goes uh, uh, it goes vanishing uh, everywhere else. Um, well, if you think about it, uh, uh, okay, this is what we saw. Uh, if you think about it, uh, okay, this is the idea of a localized. Uh, phase to is the phase to is said to be localized on the defect is confined to the tubular neighborhood of the defect. I mean the healing region of the defect, very very locally. Remember, locally we have a change in density is where gradients matter. That is important. Okay, so we have uh, uh, the instability criterion that uh, tell us uh, that uh, there is a diffusion of a twist along the filament, and we think, okay, let's start with a twist different from zero and rise zero, and we'll see what happens, at least mathematically. Okay, so the idea is, uh, if you look at the defect, at least this is a cross-section of it, uh, from distance, uh, you see exactly what you see, the point, uh, point-like uh, region. Um, but uh, imagine to do a close-up view, uh, here the lines uh, stand for just uh, isophase surfaces around, but suppose that uh, just locally, you start uh, seeing something uh, that uh, it gives uh, you a spiral structure. And as you move away, uh, move closing, you see the spiral structure localized there and uh, nothing else outside. So this, uh, we did some, some analysis on this and uh, you can prove that if this can be realized in the lab, you have the usual transition from conversion of twist to rise. And uh, well, uh, we just uh, gave the example of a particular 
uh, a phase a function that uh, is highly localized in the juvenile region. And so you can imagine that the twist uh, goes all around, but it stays there. Now, these, uh, these parts of the green uh, uh, ribbons uh, are meant to, to become uh, almost regular away from the juvenile region. And so we uh, wonder if uh, this can be realized in the lab and uh, can give you more or less the mechanism uh, that uh, gives you the transition of a twisted loop into a rivet loop well known to uh, elasticity uh, people and uh, a fundamental mechanism in uh, DNA topology. This picture, I borrowed this picture from uh, an old uh, paper, sorry, uh, by Paul Sutcliffe and uh, and uh, a collaborator. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. If there are, are there any uh, questions or comments, please. No. Yes. How are you doing? Thank you. 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 Thank you.